Matthew chapter 14, that's our reading for today. Thank you so much for, for joining me as we end our week in God's Word. Um, what a blessing it's been to be in His Word this week. You know, John the Baptist was a man of prophecy. He was a man of humility. He was a man that, well, he recognized that Jesus was superior and that Jesus was the answer. He was a man who, who set the stage, uh, per se. He, he, he prepared the way prepared the hearts of men for Christ Jesus. He, he was a man who spoke the truth, and as we're going to see uh, this morning, he did it with great courage. You know, here's the thing. It, it takes great courage to speak the truth. You know, as the evangelist at, at Kenwood, I, I'm typically preaching to an audience that's, that's lockstep with the message uh, from God's Word, a receptive audience that wants the truth, that's that's craving the truth. And over the last so many years, there, there's been instances, though, where speaking the truth was hard. There are subjects that I, I know that are going to be hard for, uh, for some in the audience. There, there have been times where, I'll just be honest with you, it would have made things a lot easier just to compromise. Um, you know, when we leave our, our assemblies and we go out in, into the world and we encounter people from all different backgrounds, people who, who possibly know little about Jesus, we, we encounter people who are consumed with the cares of the world, people who have been deceived by error and false doctrine. You know, in, in our society today where the divorce rate is high, and if it's possibly dipping a bit, it's only because people simply are choosing not to marry. But in this environment where divorce for any reason is acceptable, really, when you think about it, where anything for any reason for that matter is acceptable. The truth is, truth is not always popular. It's not always applauded. You know, Jesus certainly understood this principle more clearer than any. And he knew that his disciples would ultimately learn firsthand what it meant to stand for truth, to proclaim the truth, and the fallout that would come from that. You know, history tells us that nearly every single one of his apostles would give their lives for the cause of Christ. A history of the early church is filled with courageous martyrs who were willing to die and did die as a result of their stand for truth. You know, in times past, we, I think all of us, um, we, we spoke in really kind of a, I don't know, a, a purely hypothetical, um, in purely hypothetical terms by way of one's willingness to, to die for the truth, for the cause of Christ. And hypothetically, we would speak of being ready to die for the cause of Christ. But I don't think, I don't think that we ever viewed that as a real possibility. You know, we, we've lived in a country that was founded on religious freedom and and this right was a plot. And, and being a Christian, I, I think for most of us, for most of our lives, living in, in, in these communities that we live in, and it was considered a good and, and even noble thing. And, and even if those around us didn't share our beliefs, they still respected us as the people of God. Brethren, I don't have to tell you, and, and, I, and I hope I'm completely wrong in this, but from my vantage point, it seems like things are changing. You know, at the very least, I, I think they're trending in the wrong direction in our nation. You know, the prospect of one day facing physical persecution for our stand for the truth, I think if we're honest, it doesn't seem all that outrageous or even outlandish. And when you consider the generations to come, our children, and our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, what will it be for them? if God allows all of this to continue. And I pray we're ready. Here, here's the thing, compromise is easy. Going along to, to get along, the path of least, least resistance is the path, is the path that, 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 that's most traveled, no doubt. But here's the thing, and, and I want us to take this with us today. Truth is worth fighting for. Truth is worth standing for. And let's even be willing to say the truth is worth dying for. You know, it was Jesus who would say in John chapter 8, verse 31, 
If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. And then he says in verse 32, famously, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You know, apart from truth, our, our friends, our families, our co-worker, even our enemies, they'll die in their sins. And the truth is, not everyone's going to appreciate the truth. Not everyone's going to accept the truth. And some are even going to fight back. You know, you consider 2 Timothy 3 at verse 12, where the Apostle Paul would say, indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Now, you think about that for a moment. I desire to live godly in Christ Jesus, and I suspect that most of my audience here this morning, you do as well. And if we desire to live godly in Christ Jesus, what does Paul say here? What should we expect? You know, Jesus would say in Matthew chapter 5, and describing uh, the life that, that would come in the kingdom by way of the cross. In Matthew chapter 5, and verse 11, Jesus would say, blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, verse 11, when, when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice, he says, and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So with all of that in mind, I want to go over to Matthew chapter 14. You, you'll remember from our, our readings this week that John told Herod the Tetrarch that he had no right to be married to his half-brother's wife. And as a result of that, they're going to kill him. Matthew chapter 14, begin reading it with me at verse 1. It says, At that time Herod the Tetrarch heard the news about Jesus and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He's risen from the dead, and that's why miraculous powers are working him. For when Herod had John arrested, he bound him and put him in prison because of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. For John had been saying to him, it's not lawful for you to have her. Although Herod wanted to put him to death, he feared the crowd because they regarded John as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. So much that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. Having been prompted by her mother, she said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. And although he was grieved, the king commanded it to be given because of his oaths, because of his dinner guest. He sent and had John beheaded in the prison. And his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl as she brought it to her mother. His disciples came and took away the body and buried it. And they went and reported to Jesus. Verse 13 says, Now when Jesus heard about John, he withdrew from them, were there in a boat to a secluded place by himself. And when the people heard of this, they followed him on foot from the cities. John told Herod the truth. He had no right to his brother's wife. And so they killed him. I want you to think about what John gave Herod and Herodias for that matter. He gave them a chance, a chance to repent in light of the truth. He presented them with the truth. He couldn't control their response, but he gave them a chance to respond to the truth. Brethren, let's give people a chance, an opportunity. Put the truth, God's word, put the truth in their court, regardless of their response. John was courageous. I want to be courageous. Let's speak the truth in love. Love for God, love for the lost, and let's give the rest to God. Let's be courageous. Thanks for reading along with me this week. If you're looking for a place to worship God this coming first day of the week, in keeping with the pattern found in our New Testament, the Kenwood Church of Christ, just a local group of Christians who've been banded together, scripturally organized under elders. We had deacons who, who serve, qualified men by way of scripture. 
We're going to come together on the first day of the week as we're commanded to do. And we're going to sing our hearts out in praise to God. We're going to thank him. And we're going to encourage one another. We're going to partake of the Lord's Supper. We're going to remember what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has done for us. We're going to do it together as the first century church did. Uh, we're going to study God's word together. We're going to pray together. We're going to give up our needs as a blessed people. And we'd love for you to come and join us. We simply are a group of Christians who are striving to do the will of God. We want to be pleasing to him. We want to do what is found in God's word, nothing more, nothing less, no creeds, no, none of that stuff, just trying to do what the Bible says, trying to help one another get to heaven. So if that sounds good to you, um, we'd love to have you. We're going to meet at 930. Um, I would encourage you to go to our website, get our contact information, get our address there. Um, we're meeting in the parking lot. We want everybody to be safe. We want everyone to be able to worship. Our older folks are immune compromised people. We want to keep everybody safe, but we want to worship God as we're commanded to do. Come and be with us. We, we, we'd love to have you. We're going to meet at 930. Bring a lawn chair if you want to sit out. You want to stay in your car? We, 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 we've made arrangements for that as well. So you can hear, we've got speakers. And, um, come and be with us. We, we'd love uh, to get to know you a little better. Um, if we can help you, let us know, all right? Thanks for joining me today. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, thank you again for this week. That we've been able to, to spend time in your word. Father, for your servant, John, for his humility, for his stand for truth, for his courage, for his willingness to, to point people to Jesus, Father. For his example, we're most thankful. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the strength it gives us. Father, it's our prayer this morning that those who have been in your word this morning, this week, that, that we have grown spiritually. And as a result of that, we'll, we'll take what we've learned and we'll apply it to our lives. And we'll be more able to serve you and others. And Father, we pray for opportunities to tell others about you. Father, thank you for everything. We long to be with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.